I'm going to tell you everything you want to know about the highly anticipated 2950 Anvil Carrick, and we're starting right now. Anvil Aerospace, all systems online. Welcome to a Star Citizens Buyer's Guide. What's up, citizens? This is Subliminal here, and today we'll be discussing the features, functions, and benefits of the Anvil Carrick. And we'll compare those features amongst competing ships so you can make an informed buying decision. We'll cover a brief overview, review stack comparisons, go over weapons, discuss components, review the pros and cons, and finish up with my thoughts on the Carrick. I will not be doing an interior tour of the Carrick as I've already done that in my first look video. A link to that is in the description. If this is our first time meeting, be sure to check out some of my other reviews in this series and consider subscribing. Now let's get to it. The Carrick is a long-term exploration spacecraft developed by Anvil Aerospace for the United Empire of Earth Navy. Once only used by the military, it is now sold on the civilian market. The Carrick is capable of making planet fall in hostile environments and deploying smaller exploration vehicles in support of its mission. It is equipped with specialized sensors for pathfinding, medical and repair facilities, and reinforced fuel tanks for long duration flight. The Carrick is manufactured by Anvil Aerospace, a Terra-based human spacecraft manufacturing corporation founded in 2772 that produces both military and civilian crafts. The Carrick has two variants, the basic and limited edition Expedition. The only difference is the exterior skin. The Carrick is currently flight ready. As of today, the Expedition is available for upgrade or purchase starting at $525 war bond and $625 upgrade. For an additional $20, you can also add the C8X. The standard starts at $500 and goes up to $620 depending on war bond or C8X inclusion. It should also be noted that it is available in the UEE Exploration 2950 package with the following ships for $1,000 war bond and $1,100 standard. Right now, you can find it on the gray market for as low as $380, but please shop at your own risk. It is not currently available to purchase with Alpha UEC. With that out of the way, let's see how it compares to other ships you might be considering. For comparison, I've selected the following 10 ships. The Google Sheet document with the data is linked in the description. If this is your first time here, check the Google Sheet or pause the screen for an explanation on how I've selected and compared the ships. The Carrot comes in at around 4.4 million kilograms. It has a max crew size of 12, has a cargo capacity of 456 SCU and comes in second place. It has over 63,500 hit points across its body, this ranks first, as well as its shields that can withstand over 189,000 hit points of damage. Has a sustained gun DPS of almost 4,300 and a burst DPS of almost 4,700. They both take fifth place. The Carrick does not have any missiles, as well as five other ships on this list, so it ties for fifth. Its fuel capacity of over 67,000 fuel units ties in last place. Its max yaw pitch rate of 28 degrees per second comes in sixth. It has an SCM speed of 208 meters per second. This demolishes the competition. And its top speed of over 1200 smashes the competition again. Its quantum drive has 62 megameters per second quantum speed. The character takes seventh place here. So travel from Port Alizar to Arcorp will take you about 11 minutes and 22 seconds. Its QT range of 1200 gigameters is by far the best Star Citizen has so far, over two times more than that of the Freelancer Dur. So it can travel from Port Alizar to Arcorp 29 times before needing to refuel. Now let's talk about its firepower. The Carrot comes with three manned turrets, one on each wing and one on the bottom as well as a remote turret on top that can be accessed from the upper bridge. The wing turrets have two CF447 Rhino laser repeaters each. One Rhino is size four, grade one, has 159 physical damage with 250 RPM for a total of 660 DPS and a 4,000 meter range. The bottom turret and the remote turret have two M6A laser auto cannons each. One M6A is size 4, grade 1, does 555 damage with 56 RPM for a total of 518 DPS and a 4200 meter range. Unfortunately, the Carrick does not have missiles. Now for the components. 
The standard components available on the Carrick are as follows. It has one size three grade two Agni quantum drive with 62 megameters per second quantum speed and a 21 second cooldown. One size three grade two Reliance power plant with over 52,000 max power generation per second. Two size three grade two ice flush coolers that provide almost 17,000 max cooling per second each. And last but not least, we have two size three grade two Barbican shield generators with over 94,000 capacity each and almost 2200 regeneration per second. I would say its pros are, well, where do I begin? The cargo capacity is second amongst flyable ships currently in the PTU. It's so fast that it doesn't even make sense. The cruise speed is 26% more than the second ship on this list and more than twice as much as the Caterpillar. Its max speed is 136 meters per second faster than second place and a 38% increase over the Cat. That 21% less cargo space between the Cat and the Carrick is looking less like an issue. Because it's a Corvette class ship, with that comes a large HP and shield capacity pool you would expect, but it outclasses the Hammerhead in both categories. The default Quantum Drive has a stupid long range, but that is at the cost of speed. So it's both a pro and a con. It doesn't matter because you could just swap it out for one that's more in the middle of the road. It has a freaking ICU, so you can respawn in it after death. A garage and a hangar for smaller vehicles with more precise roles for exploration. These are just a few things that make the Carrick special, and I'm ignoring features that have not been implemented into the game yet, like cartography and drones to name a few. Its cons are, well, it doesn't have missiles, its DPS isn't very good, and it's not very agile. But it's not a fighter ship, so I really don't care. Oh, and I can't leave this little bit out. It's gonna have to set you back at least $600. This can't be ignored. So, my thoughts. The Carrick has been one of the most anticipated ships in Star Citizen's history, and I can see why. It really is almost a king of all trades. If you gave it good pilot weapons and missiles, there would be no other reason to fly any other ship in the verse. So for the player who wants to focus on the task of exploring and running cargo, there's no need to look any further. The Carrick has you covered. This ship is a must buy for any organization looking to participate in multi-crew gameplay. Now the price is pretty steep, and I'm sure early backers are feeling pretty good right now. But for everyone else, $600 can be a lot of money. It can be argued that the steep price is good because after all, if everyone owned a Carrick, it would be pretty hard to find crew members necessary to utilize all of the gameplay features that the Carrick brings. So my opinion is this. The fact is a sale happens when value exceeds cost. So if a virtual ship in a virtual game presents enough value to you to spend 300 plus dollars, then whale out. If not, be thankful for the backers that have the means because it's what's fun in the game and benefiting everybody involved. So is it worth it? Well, that's up to you. And maybe your spouse because mine, she doesn't see the value yet. Those are my thoughts, what are yours? Let's continue this conversation down in the comments. I'm not sure what ship I wanna review next. If you have a suggestion, please let me know. What are your opinions on the character? Let me know down in the comments. Did you like this review? Like it. Subscribe by clicking the circle here. Check out some of my other reviews in this series here. And if you enjoy my content and would like to support the channel further, check the description for ways to do so. However, your viewership is more than enough. Until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.